Well, how do y'all? Well, the radio uh, discussion with Papa Prepper the other night went so good. Uh, thought I would print out some notes here on the menu items for the UV5R. <clears throat> I can't imagine uh, that, that the menus for the other rigs, the UV3 and the UV9, would be any different. Although I, I haven't looked at them to verify this. Uh, as best I can tell, the biggest differences between the 5, the 3, and the 9 is just the, the power output uh, and, and a little bit of of uh, well, the way they look, you know, a little bit of cosmetic stuff, nothing too drastic. So this this ought to apply to all three rigs, uh, you know, the, these menu settings and what have you. So we we'll talk a little bit about all of them. I have nine pages of notes, so this this may take multiple videos, but we'll we'll deal with that as the time comes. There there are forty one menu settings in in this radio. So, uh, and I know it gets confusing to the new guys. It got confusing to me when, when I bought the radio and I, I've been a ham 35 years. But I'm, I'm an old dinosaur now. Uh, you know, and a lot of the newer stuff is, it has changed so much since, since the days I got into it. So, you know, here we go. All right. Uh, you, you hit the menu button on the 5R. The first one will be zero. They, they start with a zero instead of a one. And this is simply the squelch, or SQL, as it may show on the menu. Those of you that have played with FM transceivers will, will know that at certain levels we have what's called white noise. And if, if you have the squelch opened all the way, it, it'll just sit there and hiss. You know, and that gets irritating real fast. So you rotate the squelch back to get rid of that noise. On the older rigs, this is simply a, a knob that you turn until the white noise goes away. With this, it's it's a menu item. So you, you set it back to a number in the menu. Um, I believe mine is set at five. And you can adjust this. Also, if you're getting some interference from, say, your router or, or computer or some other setting, you, you can adjust this tighter until the noise goes away. So that's that's what that does. All right. Uh, number one is the step, frequency step in kilohertz. You may or may not need to adjust this, especially if you're, you're programming it or in VFO mode. Uh, quite a bit. If, if you're using the channels for all, all of your communications, this, this won't be uh, quite as necessary, but in, in VFO mode, the, this can be a, a big one. In the 2 meter amateur band, between 144 and 146 megahertz, the repeater spacing is in 20 kilohertz spacing. 145 11, 145 13, 145 15, 145 17, etc. Between 146 and 148, the frequency spacing is in 15s. Uh, the repeater spacing and the simplex frequencies. So you'll have, say, 146 40 is, well, sometimes it's a repeater input frequency, sometimes it's a simplex frequency. Then it goes 146, 415, 43, 445, 145, 46, uh, 147, 475, 146, 49, etc. So you, depending upon where you're operating, you, you can adjust this for 15, 20, etc. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head what the spacing is for the FRS and GMRS channels, but you, you do a search for those channels and it, it will tell you, you know, you can see the, the spacing between the channels and you can set the frequency step accordingly if, if that's what you're using it for. 
All right, setting number two is TXP, or transmit power. And this will be a high or low. Uh, low is typically a watt, from what I'm seeing on the uh, 5R, and 4 is about 4 watts. Uh, will will vary from, from radio to radio. Uh, the 3R, I believe, is 2 or 3 watts on high power. The 8, I believe, goes 8 watts on high power, if, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember the low power setting on it, on either of these. The deal here is if, if you're just running with your local group, say in the park or, or what have you, and you're running simplex just talking direct back and forth to one another, you'll want to set this to low power. That will conserve battery life. Aside from that, you, you don't really need a whole lot to talk short distances like that. So, you know, that'll keep you from interfering with anybody else. Help save the batteries and tearing up other people. You know, and, and as a good amateur, you, you want to run as little power as you you need to anyway, just just to get away with whatever it is you want to want to do. Uh, the notes here tell me that uh, when TXP is set to low, that an L will be indicated on the status display. Uh, I leave mine on high simply to get into the local repeater here uh, a little bit better when I'm sitting back in the bedroom. All right, number three, uh, battery save, or simply save, as it's called in the uh, in the menu. Uh, this one I haven't really played with. It says it selects the ratio of sleep cycles to awake cycles, one to one, two to one, three to one, etc. Uh, the the higher the number, the longer the battery will last, and that is beneficial. That that keeps you from having to recharge it all the time. By the way, I should hasten to add, I always think it a good idea to have multiple batteries for your, your radio. That way, if one does go dead, just slide it off the back, put in another battery, and then you're still in business while the radio, that, that particular battery is charging. That way, you're, you're not completely dead out of the water. Number four is, the, is what's called VOX, or Voice Operated Transmission. Most of you are, are familiar with, with what's called PTT, or push to talk, where you press the button on either the side of the radio or the speaker mic to key the transmitter. With this, it, it has an internal relay or, or something where it, when, when the microphone hears noise, the electrical signal then keys the radio. And then there's a, a setting in there for how sensitive that is to to that noise and then keying the radio and then there's also a, a delay as to when to unkey and throw it back to the receiver. These are normally in seconds or in uh, micro or microseconds usually. Uh, the notes here indicate that uh, the level setting may not work properly, possibly a firmware bug. That I don't know. I've always left mine in push to talk, and with with FM, that's usually the case. You you press the button, uh, say what you got to say, and then unkey when when you're done. Number five is listed as WN wide band or narrow band, 25 kilohertz or 12.5. You can generally leave this at, at wide. Uh, that that just determines the amount of frequency space it's going to hear at any given time. You only really need to put it on narrow, use the narrow filter. If things are getting crowded, you get a lot of people together on the air and you start getting interference from adjacent frequencies, you can put the narrow band on and that'll help eliminate some of the interference. All right, number six is ABR, or Automatic Light Shutoff Timer. Uh, when, when you turn the radio on, etc., it, it will have a backlight behind the LCD display. And this sets the duration for how long that backlight is lit. And this too will can help save the battery. I'm sure many of you remember years ago when uh, LEDs were first starting to come into calculators, watches, etc. 
uh, while, while that's a wonderful technology for battery operated devices such as this, they, they can eat a lot of current. So uh, the LCD displays are better but in that regard, at least for saving batteries, but then you, you got to have the backlight, especially when, when the room is dark or something, you, you won't be able to see the display without it. So that, that gives you the timer. Okay, next page. Let's see what we got. Number seven is listed as TDR, the dual wit, uh, dual watch transceiver, dual reception. This feature al allows you to monitor two frequencies at the same time. A, a very innovative feature. The first radio I ever saw have this feature was called the AC-1000. That was about 1990 or so where it had two receivers in the same cabinet and you, where you could listen to them at the same time. Very slick feature. Uh, mine is turned off, although I need to turn it on if, if you want to monitor, say, two repeaters at the same time without having to manually switch back and forth. Uh, you know, if, if you want to listen to the local VHF and UHF repeaters, that's where this comes to play. Uh, number eight is the keypad beep. And if you've ever pressed the, the keypad on the, uh, the five R's, beep, 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 beep. Uh, if you're wanting confirmation that the radio verified it, it heard you pressing the keypad, you, you want this on. If, like me, it gets irritating after a while, you shut this off. Okay, number nine is the TOT, or Transmit Timeout Timer. Uh, all amateur radio repeaters you will get into have a three minute timer on them. This is to encourage you to get in, say what you say, unkey the mic, move on. Or sometimes you'll, you'll get a guy once in a while that knows he's gonna get a little long winded He'll unkey, let the re the repeater reset the timer. You know, he'll say, let me reset. He'll unkey the mic, let the timer reset itself, and go again. This will help save battery life, too, and keep you from, from overheating the radio. Okay, number 10, the Receive Digital Coded Squelch. Uh, I believe this is uh, what we used to know as DTMF years ago. This feature I have not played with, so I cannot confirm that. Something that you, you really don't see much of anymore in the amateur radio service. Used to see uh, see that on transmit years ago with phone patch on repeaters on, on the transmit side. But with the advent of cell phones, uh, man, there's not a whole, whole lot of this around anymore. All right, number 11 and... Well, number 10, the, the receive, and the number 12, the transmit digital code squelch go together. Just one's in receive, one's in transmit. Can put together number 11 and number 13, the receive and transmit con, uh, CT, CSS, continuous tone coded squelch system. What we also know is a subaudible tone. These tones are outside the human hearing range but think of these as selective hearing. Uh, the repeaters and the radios can hear these tones and each repeater and radio can be set different, have a different tone in it. This eliminates interference. Say you got two repeaters in two adjoining towns on the same frequency. If, if the guy, the, if the repeater in the next town over has a different tone than what you're using, that repeater won't hear you. It, it'll hear you, it just won't acknowledge you uh, without the tone. And vice versa, you know, guys using the same repeater in the adjoining town have a different tone, your repeater won't acknowledge them and, and allow them entry into the system. Uh, eliminates a lot of interference. Uh, this was not so problematic years ago, but receiver technology through the years has really picked up, so interference is, is becoming more of a problem. Okay, number 14, voice, uh, or voice prompt. This is the 
female voice you hear saying, you know, things like confirm and etc. When, when you're programming from the keypad. I finally shut mine off. Uh, it, it got irritating, but if you want, uh, you know, audible confirmation, this would be the way to go. Uh, 15, automatic number identification. This is one that I do not use. I don't believe this is active in, in the amateur radio service, so uh, unless you're doing commercial things with the radio, I, I wouldn't get too excited about it. Let's see. 16 is the DT, DTMF side tones. Uh, can be heard through the transceiver speaker. Um, mine is turned off. Again, we, we don't do a whole lot of DTMF stuff anymore. 17, PTT ID. Selects one of 15 signal codes. Again, this is something in mine that's turned off. Don't use it. 18. SC Rev or the scan revive resume method. This has to do with when you put it in scan mode. Most of the time you won't need this if you're just monitoring one or two of the local repeaters. Uh, this feature I've I've never really played with it, so I can't address it a whole lot. But that's that's what this has to do with. Uh, 19, PTT ID, push to talk ID. A lot of rigs years ago would, would have a feature where they put a CW ID or a Morse code ID or in them and would identify the station every 10 minutes as is required by the FCC. I'm guessing that this is what, what this is around. Uh, BOT is the uh, selected S code for the beginning EOT is the end. Uh, something that's not actively used. Just, just remember to throw out your call periodically, and uh, you'll be fine. Okay, number twenty is the PTTLT lag t lag transmission. A uh, variable from uh, zero to thirty and zero to fifty. Again, something that I've not messed with. Don't know that we, we mess with that. 20 and 21 are the memory display formats for uh, VFOs A and B. Mine just displays the frequency, so I have not messed with this. I believe to display the name of the actual repeater and etc., you need to use the Chirp software and I just program mine with the keypad so it just displays the frequency. And then you'll just need to remember what frequency goes with, with what. And that's generally not a problem. Number 23, busy lockout channel. This is for when you're in scan. Uh, it, it'll show you what's already in use. Frequencies already in use. Number 24 is the automatic keypad lock. Uh, this says the keypad will uh, will be locked if not used in eight seconds. Then you have to press the, the pound and the lock key for two seconds to temporarily unlock it. Uh, the, this, this will keep you from uh, transmitting unwanted uh, DTMF codes if, if you accidentally hit the DTMF pad while you're in transmit mode. Uh, that would have been more prevalent years ago uh, to keep you from automatically bringing up the uh, the phone patch or changing frequencies or something off the keypad. Not a bad feature. 25 SFT slash D. This is the frequency shift direction. Uh, when you use a repeater there's an input frequency and an output frequency. And the frequency in your display is the output frequency. The uh, shift direction gives you the offset. Either you're going negative for the input or positive. 
two meters, uh, the offset, by the way, and, and this address is number 26, will be 600 for 440 is 5 megahertz. 600 kilohertz on two meters. This is adjustable, though, on the 5R. That way, if you got a, a local group that you're wanting to operate dual frequencies with, you can have a, a you can set an offset and have one receive frequency and one transmit. That's kind of a, a neat feature to, to kind of mess with people and uh, all such as that. Okay, 27 is the uh, menu channel programming. Wouldn't get too excited. Maybe I can make another video about programming the radio. Uh, and 28 goes with it, del delete or erase memory channel. That's the first one I used when I am programming a frequency. Delete the frequency that's already in there and then go back to programming. But again, we'll, we'll deal with that in another video. Uh, 29 WT-LED. That's the uh, backlight LED color. You can set it for blue, orange, or purple. Uh, 30 is the receive LED, and 31 is the transmit LED. What color it's going to be in receive and transmit. And again, it's optional off, blue, orange, or purple. You can set these for whatever color suits your fancy. That's personal taste. 32 is alarm mode. Uh, sounding alarms through the radio speaker only. Transmits a cycling tone over the, over the air. Uh, code transmits 119 or 911 in reverse, followed by an A and I code. This one for me is turned off as well. 33 is the band selection, and this is for when you're in VFO mode. VHF, which is 2 meters, or UHF for when you're on 440. 34 is the TDRAB dual reception display priority. Which one you're going to see first? Uh, which frequency? 35 STE transceiver squelch tail elimination. Uh, let's see, it says this function is used to eliminate squelch shell noise between 5Rs that are communicating directly, no repeater. Again, one, one of them that I've never messed with. I mean, the squelch tail, you know, the, you'll, you'll hear a little bit of noise when you unkey a little, that's the squelch tail. And these are typically short enough that you, you don't get, need to get excited about it. 36, uh, squelch tail elimination, same thing. 37, repeater retard squelch tail elimination. Another one of them I haven't messed with. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, why some of this is put in here, I, I don't know. 38, power on message. Controls the behavior of the display when the transceiver is turned on. Uh... I just left it at default, you know, no, no biggie. 39 is the Roger beep. A lot of amateurs will find this very annoying and unprofessional. It, it, it throws out what's called a Roger beep at the end of a transmission. Those of you that have played with CB radios will know what, what this is. But a lot of hams think it's very, uh they, they just listen up for when you key and go from there. 40 is the reset, which resets the, ra the radio to the firmware default, default settings. So there you go, folks. All 41 topics or menu items for the BFing radios. Hope this helps. Uh, leave some comments if you have any questions or comments. Hope this was helpful. With that... Good day.